Hey guys! So, a downsizing in automobile production has never been good news. However, recently this disappointing news seems to be pouring in on us from a horn of plenty, or more accurately, a horn of financial losses and broken dreams of new four-wheeled friends. So, since mid-2021, BMW, Volkswagen, and Skoda factories have stopped working several times. In September, Toyota decreased its production by 40%. Since late September, General Motors has been taking their Chevy Silverado pickups to empty lots right off the conveyor. Mercedes and Renault are focusing on selling expensive models. Tesla hasn't made any announcements about new cars, still waiting for my Cybertruck. And car buyers the world over have run into an unexpected deficit. And it's all because of one thing. Microchips. The world car industry is experiencing a crisis because of a lack of materials the size of a matchbox. So, why is one tiny chip suffocating the largest car factories and freezing practically all of the electric car evolution? Watch more to find out. Safety, responsiveness, economy, comfort, and, of course, eco-friendliness. When developing new car models, manufacturers strive to find the perfect relationship among these parameters, but mechanical means aren't enough to achieve that. More specific parameters in cars are set using electronics. Now, to control the transition between various modes, every functional system has several electronic sensors. All the sensors in the systems and car overall send their signals to the car's controller and an onboard computer that calculates them. By the way, the first onboard computer was installed on the Aston Martin Lagonda in 1976. When the car debuted at a London car show in Earl's Court, its effect was like an exploding bomb, and it immediately became a sensation that everyone was talking about. It seemed like the car was actually from another world, since it looked so unordinary. The digital panel was the most impressive, with its digital display and sensor buttons. It was the first car of its kind, and it really was a time traveler. In 1976, planes were made even simpler, and there was no talk of anything like this being put into cars. The car's interior matched its class, with air conditioning, leather seats with electric controls, a sunroof, and more. Now, let's move on to 2000, when the American company Tracer created and tested the first onboarder and sent it to serial production. Since then, electronic systems and tools have been constantly grown in cars. That includes automatic blocking systems, as well as various automatic devices that provide an automatic transmission and car movement. All the electronics can be split into four main groups. The power, battery, and generator, the engine control, the transmission control, the interior control, including multimedia, navigation, AC, the dashboard, the windshield cleaning, locking, doors, and more. In short, Chips control everything in modern cars, from car entertainment systems to the battery and, of course, driver assistance. So 300 to 3,000 chips are used to make just one car. Their presence at the factories, until recently, was just kind of taken for granted. But something went wrong. Rewind back to the spring of 2021. The parking lot for the Kentucky Speedway racetrack in the small American town of Sparta was overcrowded. It was full of thousands of Ford pickups standing in lines from Ford's nearby factory. The cars were sent there to wait for the chips necessary for the cars. Parking lots in many USA dealerships were half empty because of a lack of new cars. Many car manufacturers had to stop their factory work in the US, Asia, and Europe because of a global deficit of chips or semiconductors that were essential for the industry. Okay, so there is a shortage, but why? 
Why is there a chip deficit? Well, there aren't many microchip manufacturers in the world for the car industry. Just about 30 in total. It's cheaper for them to outsource production to other companies, so even technological giants, like the American company AMD, one of the largest producers of microchips, haven't been making their own chips since 2009, and orders them from other companies based on its own technology. Over the last decade, the demand for microchips has grown, and the number of producers has decreased, so now the world car industry is faltering and suffering. The main explanation sounds pretty upsetting for the car industry. It turned out to be less important for the chip producers than companies that provide communication and information technology and for household electronics. The car manufacturers started fighting forward to prepare for this when they had to stop their production due to the lockdown, causing the supply chains to break. Pessimistic estimations for the future of the car industry during the pandemic weren't justified. The demand for cars quickly returned, and chip manufacturers unfortunately weren't ready and couldn't meet the demand of the car industry in their production plants. There were two fires in Japan that only worsened the situation. On March 19, 2020, a fire broke out in one of the Renesas Electronics factories that specializes in making car chips. Now, although the fire destroyed a relatively small part of the building, they had to stop production for a whole month. In late October 2020, Asai Casey Microsystems had a fire in a factory that makes audio chips, including ones for car navigation systems. Additionally, in February 2021, atypical cold weather and stormy winds partially paralyzed the power system in Texas, where many microelectronic producers are located. Now, the lack of electricity meant, again, stopping production. Austin is home to a factory from South Korean giant Samsung and two factories from the Dutch company NXP, which is one of the largest producers of car chips in the world. Now, during this time, Taiwan, an island, the leader of the world's semiconductor production, experienced a serious drought, and the production of chips uses a large quantity of super clean water. Now, Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company factories, say that three times fast, uses 63,000 tons of water per day. Now, one of the most serious and constantly growing factors is the growth of the crypto mining sector, which consumes a significant amount of highly advanced processors and video cards. Speaking of video cards, Nvidia saw 50% growth in 2019. That's what the mining can do. On the other hand, the lack of chips is slowing down the growth of powerful miners that consumed over 121 terawatt hours in 2021 of produced electricity, which is the equivalent to the electricity demand in countries like Saudi Arabia, Norway, or Ukraine. Miners' demand for resources has already drawn attention from the Chinese government that has two-thirds of the mining power in the world that use cheap electricity produced by Chinese thermal power plants. The restrictions decreased significantly the amount of Chinese mining companies, and that's good news for Chinese electricity. But the result of all these sudden changes to demand is the sharp increase in the cost of containers. Now, the cost to send one 40-foot container from Asia to Europe increased from $1,500 to $17,000 per year. This caused a real catastrophe. Because of that, many car manufacturers had to temporarily close their remaining factories, and then car delivery times grew in turn. Transport and leasing companies also ran into real problems. The delivery of commercial and service vehicles can now have a six to nine month wait. According to the British Society of Producers and Sellers of Automobiles, the amount of new car registrations in the country from January to August 2021 was 25.3% lower than the average over the last 10 years. Now, in January 2021, analysts predicted that the car industry would lose about $60 billion over a year. But in May, the prediction was adjusted to 100. However, the deficit on the market has caused more than just temporary difficulties and obstacles. It's connected to this fundamental reason. The rapidly growing demand for the world car industry for chips is competing with chips in the IT industry and household electronics, 
according to the experts at Roland Berger. They calculated that premium class cars now with internal combustion engines have semiconductors costing $3,000. Along with the transition to electric cars and the growth of automated and automatic driving, semiconductors are in greater and greater demand. According to the prediction by Roland Berger, by 2025, the total cost of all the semiconductors used in an electric car will cost over $7,000. Therefore, the world crisis in delivering chips that specialists think might last until 2025 struck not only the production of cars, but also the economies of several countries, the expectations of consumers, and the evolution of cars as well. Because of the situation, potential buyers have been going to dealerships less because of the growing prices. Many of them are delaying buying a new car or are looking for a suitable offering on the used car market. No one wants to risk suggesting what will happen tomorrow. So, what do you think? How will this car production crisis end and what solutions will be found? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like too while you're at it, and I'll see you next time.